Only 5% of students actually got this question correct when it came to their real exam. It's from an AQA GCSE physics paper and I'm going to go through some of the common mistakes that people made. Now of course if you do have exams coming up I do have a full set of GCSE practice papers you can download. I've got six for paper one, I've got six for paper two. They all come with a full set of work solutions and also there are video solutions over on my website GCSE Physics Online. So if you want to prepare for your real exams coming up have a look at those practice papers. Now let's have a look at the question. What we have is a velocity time graph for a car and this shows the journey where a car is going to constant velocity that the driver then saw the hazard, they put the brakes on and they came to a stop. Now for the first part, I've actually got what it said in the examiner's report. So this is written by the people who marked the exams and basically only 25% got three marks here. They need to calculate the deceleration. Now we can do that because on the graph with the velocity time graph, the gradient is equal to the acceleration or we could also use uh, the equation that says the acceleration is equal to the change in velocity divided by time. And we can see once they put the brakes on at this point here at two seconds, we've got a constant gradient, so a constant deceleration. Now the final velocity is going to be zero. The initial velocity is not 25, which is what a lot of people put. If we look at the line, it's actually at 26 meters per second. And the time it took to go from 26 to zero was equal to, well, it ends at between 5 and 5.5, uh, so that's going to be equal to 5.25 seconds. Take away this one here, which is 2.0. Okay, so it's just this part of the journey we're looking at. And of course, you can then just put the number straight into your calculator, and that's equal to minus 8. So minus 8.0 is the deceleration. Now, of course, We've got one mark for actually working at the gradient of that line or looking at this point and this point. Um, we've got another mark for writing down the answer, but the third mark that people forgot was about actually using the correct units. This is going to be metres per second squared. Okay, so that is the third mark that lots of people missed out on. But that is not the hardest bit of the question. That was kind of the nice, easy warm-up. The next part here was worth five marks. And only 5% of the students got five marks for this. Now, I think the reason is the way that the question was worded made it look like this was the time when they saw the hazard. They then had this certain kind of reaction time, which was going to be equal to our thinking distance. And then we've got the brakes being applied and then we have our braking distance. Now, the question asks you to calculate the stopping distance of the car. But the key thing that I think lots of people didn't see is that the reaction time of the driver is 0.75 seconds. Now what I'm going to do on the graph is I'm just going to break it into a couple of sections. Okay, so basically looking at this first part of the graph here, this is where the driver sees the ha hazard, they then have to process that and then they apply the brakes. And basically they put on the brakes at two seconds and that means 0.75 of a second before that at 1.25 seconds is actually when they see the hazard. So this is when they actually see the hazard. And because we've got a velocity time graph, the area under that graph is equal to the displacement. Okay, the distance traveled. So this area here is going to be equal to the thinking distance. I'm gonna call that TD. Of course, they then put on the brakes, the car then starts to slow down, and there's going to be this distance here under the line, this big triangle up here, excuse it's not super neat and this area here is going to be equal to the braking distance and of course the total stopping distance is going to be equal to this area plus this area okay and I think that the reason that lots of people found this difficult was because they thought that this graph just showed the time from when they first saw the hazard rather than this initial region when the car is just traveling at a constant velocity. Okay, so now we've kind of basically drawn on the graph, which is something I would urge you to do because we're gonna use this figure to help answer that. We're gonna calculate the stopping distance. So um, the thinking distance is just gonna be this area here, and that's going to be equal uh, to the height, which is 26 multiplied by the distance here, uh, which is going to be the same as 2.0 minus 1.25, or that 0.75 of a second. Uh, again, 
you can do stuff in your head. You can work out, uh, you know, three quarters of 26. But I'm, I'm just going to do 26 times 0 0.75, which is equal to 19.5 metres. OK, pretty straightforward so far. You can then do the same thing for the breaking distance. But now we've got the area of a triangle. So that's going to be a half times, in this case, the height is 26. And the base is going to be equal to 5.25 minus 2.0. Again, put the numbers into your calculator, and this is equal to 42.25 metres, which now then means the total stopping distance is just going to be these two numbers added together, which equals 61.75. So um, to kind of maybe make my answer a bit neater, I'm going to say this is equal to 62, and then the distance is going to be metres, and that is my final answer. Okay, you basically get two marks for this. You get a mark for your working out of actually working out the area and then a mark for your value for the thinking distance. You then get another mark for working out the area of that triangle and therefore that distance and the final mark is going to be for your final combined answer. So um, it says here and I'm just going to sort of have a look at what it said. Um, in the examiner's report it said 5% of students got the full five marks. About 20% gained two marks for calculating the thinking distance. Um, and basically, a lot of the people who scored zero didn't attempt to actually look at the area under the graph. So 65% of the people who got this incorrect didn't even have a go at using the area under the graph. Anyway, um, that question, uh, I thought it was quite a nice one. It was high demand. It was on a higher tier paper. But if you can do that, um, then actually that means you're going to be able to do any pretty much any question that comes up in your real exams coming up this summer and don't forget if there's anything you're not sure about if you want to watch more videos about stopping and thinking and breaking distance i've got everything over at gcse physics online